Good morning, afternoon, depends on where you are. I am very glad to welcome all of you who are present today at the commencement of the Runway to Frugal Innovation Forum 2022, hosted by BRAC. It is a privilege to be among such a diverse audience of global leaders, both familiar and new, but driven by a shared goal of creating economic inclusivity through frugal innovation. This year's Frugal Innovation Forum and its runway event, where we are now, are back after a considerably long pause due to COVID disruption. But we are very happy and excited to be back on track with our continual agenda of enabling frugal innovators to be more successful in their creative efforts in developing services and products that are designed for all. Since its beginning, the forum has been a knowledge-sharing endeavor for young innovators Development practitioners, policymakers, academics, and global institutions from across the region to come together and learn about innovative solutions that can help create pathways to leverage human development and inclusive communities. Each year, we focused on different aspects that we thought should and could constitute inclusive societies. But what we kept a common focus on in each of these themes was the scope for designing innovations that are scalable, simple, and sustainable, not just in theory, but in practice as well. This year, we wanted to steer our frugal innovation conversations back to the digital territory, a more circumstantially relevant theme, so to speak. We started conversations around scaling digitally starting in 2014. Our discussions on when it makes sense to go digital and when it is the right time to make a switch at that point in time were inevitable. This was eight years ago. Many things were significantly different back then than they are today. Within this time, the narrative of digitalization for socioeconomic development has gone from invention to adoption, especially because of the increasing focus and investments made in building the infrastructure and human capital to enable societies that can embrace digital innovation. This is particularly true for the Global South. It is indeed fascinating to see how actively and rapidly digital transformation of services is filtering into the development sector in the South as well. But the bigger question to address is, are we all ready to embrace a life that is predominantly centered around technology especially with money, something that we deal with on the foundation of a lot of trust? And also, are we creating any exclusion in the name of digitalization? Hence, this year we have come together on this platform to look into this particular question, and not just to scale digitally, but to scale digitally in the pursuit of women's economic empowerment. I'm confident that the discussions that will be taking place under this theme will incite new knowledge to many of us, derived not only from the success stories, but also from failed attempts of designing digital financial services to bring unbanked women into financial systems and take one step closer to creating inclusive communities. To set a bit of context, I want to first focus on why we have specifically chosen to talk about women's economic empowerment this year. Let's look at some numbers. Women constitute more than half of the population and yet uncovered by formal banking services at alarming numbers. In China, India, Turkey and Bangladesh, women make up over 60% of the unbanked population. Although Bangladesh has demonstrated impressive gains in providing access to financial services for women since 2014, the gender gap among the bank population still remains significant. In Kenya, where mobile money services have a significant reach, women are still underrepresented, constituting two-thirds of the remaining unbanked. Women living in low-resource, hard-to-reach areas is the biggest social segment that is often overlooked when financial institutions design financial services and products. Limited financial literacy, lack of educational opportunities, social norms, and the subsequent restrictions on agency and mobility are some major factors that tend to hinder women's ability to prove financial responsibility and financial literacy, which in turn causes the formal financial market to consider them as credit risks. But in reality, 
as much as evidence suggests, women tend to be the most responsible family members in terms of dealing with finances. They are often proven to prioritize investing their household income in activities that contribute to the advancement of the family members, such as children's education, better health and nutritional conditions and savings. This is where frugal innovation comes into play. Financial inclusion has always been in discussions, but we cannot expect to move towards scaling up women's economic empowerment if all that we rely on is the informal financial market. We have to think beyond graduating women from the informal finances to the formal banking market and look at how their financial agency can be unlocked through economic empowerment instead. What they need is access to financial tools that are designed closer to them, for them, and can be used by themselves independently. This is why frugally designed financial tools and products hold a significant place as they can take the service to the women. Ultimately, providing better, faster, cheaper services to their beneficiaries closer to their own comfort zone. The integration of digital solutions to widen the outreach of financial services to hard to reach areas and increase the uptake has expanded opportunities for many women already. Bangladesh is one of the leading examples of designing digital financial services that are customer specific, particularly products that are focused towards female beneficiaries. The government's Digital Bangladesh agenda has taken digital infrastructure to every corner of the country, making mobile ownership financial agent networks, and literacy building content accessible to all. Now is the time to build on this momentum, work together to make these essential services more responsive and inclusive. At BRAC, we work to give people the tools to fight poverty. Over the past 50 years of its service, BRAC has had the opportunity to work with both local and international financial institutions to explore, design, and pilot various digital financial products targeting the last mile customers. While it was rewarding to explore the potential of the impact of these products can create in low-income households, particularly around women's economic role in their communities, our work has also helped us identify the various challenges the DFS sector faces in the Global South. These gaps need to be addressed if the goal is to scale up digital financial services for the last mile customers. And a more effective way to pursue this is through evidence generation, capacity building, and knowledge sharing. DFS solutions enable women to have access to formal financial services like payment, transfer, credit, and insurance products. Government-to-person payments such as conditional cash transfers may provide a path for the financially excluded to financial inclusion. Apart from that, lower cost digital platforms reduce loss, theft, and other financial crimes posed by cash-based transactions. These are the added benefits. And lastly, for women, it can lead to economic empowerment by enabling asset accumulation and increasing their economic participation. We at Bragg are committed to exploring new frugal and innovative DFS solutions by bringing together knowledge and stories from different stakeholders onto this same platform and catalyze the scaling of digital financial services sustainably through strengthening stakeholder networks and mobilizing resources in the global south. I hope you all have an engaging and productive few days, sharing stories and learning from each other at the seventh Runway to Frugal Innovation Forum. Welcome again, and we look forward to continuing this journey with you together. Thank you.